G'day, thanks for tuning in. Let's have a look at what's inside this Milwaukee Random Orbital Sander. This is a brand new tool, haven't used it, nice and clean. And what it is, is this bottom disc here, you put a sandpaper pad on it, on this Velcro bit. And then when you turn it on, that'll just oscillate and move around randomly, so we'll do that. Uh, and then as that happened, I can feel a lot of airflow here. So I think air gets pulled in on the side. Actually, no, I think that gets pulled out. Let's just try that again. Yeah, so the air's pulling in from the top and then being expelled out the back here or on the bottom on that side. And then on this side here, it's got this little channel and this air filter. So it would catch a lot of that sawdust and it would just go straight into the filter here. So powered by air. M18 battery will take, I think it fits a 5 amp hour one fine, but it probably won't take anything bigger because of this little gap here. Alright, so we put that aside, and then yeah, we've got this air filter as well as I mentioned before. So that just attaches off, it's just pressure fitted on there. It does have this little click actually, so it will clip in place. And then just a plastic bit, and it's got a reusable filter there. There you go, so that little filter membrane to catch all of that dust inside it. And then you can probably just clean this out, vacuum. You might even be able to wash this. I'm not sure exactly what the membrane this is made of. But eventually after time this will wear out, so it's got nice just Phillips screws there holding it in place. So that can just be unscrewed and replaced. All right, we'll put that aside. And then this unit here, you just hold it up the top. It's got a nice grip, this whole surface, the, the black. It's nice and grippy, hold it there, and then you've got the on and off control here, and then pushing back on this side to turn it off. So quite handy to do, and it's got a nice grip here as well if you want to use it with two hands, or even on the side. It seems to be quite, quite ergonomically designed, which is nice. As far as how this is held together, it's just got the two clamshells and a bunch of screws over here. So let's dig in. Nice. That comes apart quite easily. It's got these really big, very big pitch on these screws. So I think that's just because it goes straight into this plastic and it just wants a big, nice grip in there. So we've got this half of the clamshell that pops off. It's a really sturdy part as a lot of other Milwaukee bits. I've been very impressed with their clamshells and the actual skins of the tools as I've taken them apart. You got a lot of ribbing in there, a lot of standoffs, very sturdy, and that'll just hold everything there together, which we'll have a look into. But all of these little bits and pieces correspond to something. So that there is for the bearing up the top, this would be space for the wheel to turn, that there holds the motor. And it's got these nice silicon inserts here. So we can take it out. Yeah, so this this little bit of flexible silicon tube. If that focuses, there we go. And that just presses up against the motor. That's how the motor is held in place. Which is nice to see because that will just absorb some of the vibration of that motor. And also hold it in place a bit more securely as well. So just do a quick close up of that. Alright, awesome. And then we've got the actual guts of the whole thing. So I'll see how this comes out because it is just held in. No idea where that spring came from, actually. I think it may have been holding this down. All right, well, before I start tearing it apart too much, let's just have a look at what's actually there. So this tool is not fuel. That means that it's got a brushed motor. So that motor there will have little brushes on the inside here. But pretty much we've got a motor that has a little bit of reduction gearing going on there through a belt drive 
and then the central shaft here with a really nice beefy bearing on that that holds that center bit together and then that just connects down through a bit of a mechanism here you can see a bit of grease there as well onto this onto this bit here And then we've got this switch here, or this actual injection molded part that acts as the switch. So you push that left and right on the on the actual case or from the outside of the case, and the little arm will reach into where the actual switch switch for this sits. So it's quite a big switch there, that on and off. Which is nice to see quite a big switch. So I assume the contacts there will be pretty big as well as this will be vibrating quite a lot so that doesn't wear out too much and it holds it sturdily in the either position. So that all kind of just slides out. I was wanting to pull this board out, but I think in order to do that, I gotta get this wheel unscrewed and it's just held in by a couple more Torx screws there. So let's do that and see if we can take that whole PCB out. Alright, so I did get that out, but that was actually quite annoying because I haven't got a Torx security bit. So these screws here that actually hold that PCB together, they're actually a Torx security bit. So it's a Torx screwdriver with that little dimple on the inside. So you need to have the right bit that's small enough, but actually also has that hole in there. Which I don't actually have the wearer ones that I've got. They're not, they're just normal Torx bits and same as my other screwdrivers, the little micro ones here. Either way, I found this railer bit that I've got, so that's good, but probably an excuse to get some more tools. All right, let's keep digging through this. So this just pulls the whole thing out. So this is obviously the guts of, of everything. And the reason I had to unscrew that was because this wheel here was held into that actual bit just over here. So let's go have a look at that. We've just got the mount for the battery, these big contacts that you slide the battery on. They just transfer the power onto the PCB right here just we've got i think these are a couple of mosfets so these would act as the switches to actually power the motor but before that the power actually runs through this switch which we sort of had a bit of a look at before and then one side from the battery the other side just goes straight onto the pcb there i think it looks like the positive terminal there so as i mentioned this is a really nice beefy switch pretty positive click there as well and then we've just got this little arm here that sits mounted in the case in such a way i think something like that that just actually, I think it'll be like this, that just actuates that switch back and forth. So this is all quite sturdy. You can use this quite a bit. I don't think this is going to be an issue in breaking, but just extra bits. And then the PCB itself, just the whole thing is covered with this really nice conformal coating. So that's just there for protection of all the surface mount components. It also does add a bit of water resistance to the actual PCB itself. Although I don't think this has any water rating at all, but it's good just to see that there as well. So on this side here, we've just got a little microcontroller and a bunch of supporting electronics around that. And then on this side, as I sort of mentioned before, we've got the power coming in and then we've got these two big MOSFET trans transistors that are mounted to a nice heat sink. So these guys will be doing the switching. So this is just a brushed motor, so it does just have positive and negative that then gets transferred onto the brushes and into the rotor and that makes it spin with the magnetic field around there. But we don't have to have full HP rectifiers or anything like that because this isn't a three phase motor so the control circuit for this is a lot simpler although this would most likely still work with as you would turn this wheel there'd be a potentiometer in there or just built straight in this looks like it's glued straight to the board 
we took three pins there. So we're just going to have a wiper and then we're going to have a ground and then the positive voltage on one side. So as you turn this, that little wiper will just turn and change the resistance, which the microcontroller will measure, send a pulse width modulated signal over to the MOSFETs over here. And then they will just switch on and off. And depending on the proportion between the on and the off time, that would then just send that power to the motor. And that's how that would be controlled or the speed of this would be controlled. That's pretty much all that's on the board. There's a couple of other components here. There's a, there's a quite a nice size diode over there, which is probably just going to be a back EMF. So when the motor stops, there'll be a, a surge of current going through. So that will just stop anything coming back onto the board and damaging it. And then just a bunch of other small little voltage regulators. There is a spot for an LED over there, but I don't think it's soldered on. I'm not sure if this does actually have any lights that do turn on or not. It doesn't look like it. I can't see anything on the board. So I'll just bring that up to the camera a little bit for a closer look. That's that side, and then we've just got this side here as well. Awesome, so that's the brain box of it, all the power and the control, and then we've just got the two wires to the motor. So just, again, that signal that comes to the motor, and then the motor down the bottom, it just has a gear and a belt, and then that belt drive turns another gear over here, which is mounted to this fan on the bottom, and also the that random orbital mechanism, which we'll have a look actually, because there's a bunch more screws over here, so we'll undo this and see exactly what actually happens inside that because we can't really see it too well. But we does do have a nice shaft all the way through, so that's a quite sturdy, quite thick shaft, and then a really nice bearing up the top for this as, as all of this vibrates and spins. Uh, all right, I'll take this off and we can have a look in there. So that just seems to loosen this bottom plate. There's just a whole bunch of lubricant there. There we go. So again, this is brand new, so no sawdust or anything there yet, but this will over time get filled with all sort of gunk. But these four screws just seem to undo this bottom plate and get this loose. And then we have, this is just a rubber ring that just sits on top of this plate here. And that's why the grease is in between that, just to limit the friction or minimize that friction between these two boards here. So we've got that, and then those four screws from there screw onto this metal plate. This is just an aluminium plate, and that gets held on. So there is a big bearing there, but there is one more screw, so let's undo that one. Should be a smaller Torx. Okay, that makes perfect sense now how this works. So this screw just screws straight into the center of that shaft. So, so this shaft, this shaft here, it just screws straight into the center of it. But then you can see, oh, this might be easier. So there we go. So that screw, end of the shaft, the shaft has two flat surfaces on the side and that's where this fan assembly mounts onto it. But I'll bring this up, you can see that that hole in this assembly is not actually in the center. So that's how the whole vibration is achieved. So this sits on top here, and as this spins, there's this is slightly off center, so it just causes this whole thing to vibrate back and forth. And then that gear there is mounted to the outside of that shaft. So as this will turn, that shaft doesn't actually turn around properly, but it oscillates a little bit. So this bottom bearing here will actually be oscillating in slightly circular motion. And then this plate mounts to that bottom plate. So that's how that bottom plate then actually oscillates. But it's, it's interesting to see how they've done that by un, not balancing this bit here. And the, the other interesting thing to see is there's more little blades on this side than there are on those sides on, on this little impeller. So as it expels the air, it'll be slightly uneven as well with the way those blades there work. But that must have all just been, again, for the balancing or the unbalancing of this. But interesting, interesting to see that. All right, so they're all nice metal bit, big sealed bearing there. So very well put together. And then undoing that, we've just got that belt drive here and it is just a bit of a reduction assembly so the motor will spin a little bit faster than this wheel it's interesting to see that they went with a belt and not just gone with 
making these two both of these two just normal spur gears and slightly bigger and just touching the gears together but maybe that's just for lubrication because then you probably have to have a sealed gearbox and lubricate it whereas this one you just have this belt on top and it's obviously just that rubber so you don't really need any lubrication there at all and it is just held together with a plastic bracket but it's got glass fiber reinforcement in that so it is quite sturdy although this is also held straight in the case so that whole center bit is held in by the nice bearings in the case and the motor is also held in separately so the purpose of this really would just be probably for tensioning this actual belt but the whole thing would be held in pretty sturdy by the case there you go just show another little close up there but that's pretty much it with this milwaukee random orbital sander so thank you very much for watching hope you hope you liked the video if you did hit that like button and if you want to see more of this sort of stuff consider subscribing so thanks very much have a great day